everyone it's george crows another episode of the innovators mindset podcast i'm glad you could join me today uh, i'm wearing one of my 10 million raptor shirts i'm a huge fan and actually uh kind of going to tie into this podcast uh, nick nurse who's the coach of the raptors just won uh, coach of the year and so well deserved i love him i love that entire organization uh messiah jury is the best general manager uh, in sports and i'm not going to talk a lot about sports but <laughs> the i just tweeted out a, a video and it was really powerful because uh, nick nurse had just uh, found out that he had won coach of the year and he had found out he found out by um, actually his high school basketball coach had actually told him on tv and it was pretty amazing it was probably 30 years after he coached them and i Think about um, my coach, Kevin Greenman, who passed away a couple years ago. His impact on me today, um, it just really is profound. And you think about all the coaches and teachers that make an impact. And it was actually reiterated, uh, Clara Redford uh, tweeted out uh, in response to the video I shared. Um, I watched this like five times. Teachers and coaches in kids' lives matter more than we will ever know. And I, I, I couldn't agree more. And it comes into this, the, the topic I'm gonna to talk about today, the importance of being learner driven. And I'm gonna talk about why I use the term learner and not student uh, in a second. But I think that for me, what is really essential in the work that we do every day is that we're not just valued, but that we feel valued. Being valued and feeling valued are two very different things, right? Uh, a lot of times we can say, hey, we value people for all the work that they do and, you know, all these incredible things, et cetera, et cetera. But then do our actions represent that? Do the, the choices that we make that affect other people uh, represent that? So being valued is something that we're always striving for. And as you s start this school year, I think the idea of being learner driven is is extremely crucial and one of the things i talk about in innovate inside the box is the idea of being learner driven evidence informed and i don't say student driven and there's a reason i don't say that terminology because i think when we think of being learner driven that's all of us that are willing to be learners in our organization and i'm really a big believer in the idea that if, if you want to be a master teacher you have to be a master learner and we have to immerse ourselves in learning but we also need to ensure that we we value all the people in our organizations to really serve them and one thing that i used to say all the time uh, and i've i still believe it but the thinking behind it is is shifted for me in the sense that I would always say like, hey, we gotta do what's best for kids. We gotta do what's best for students. And I, to be honest, yes, I still believe that. I think that's really important in the work that we do every single day. But I think to me, when you are trying to do what's best for kids, you have to do what's best for the people closest to them to ensure you're doing what's best for kids. It's not doing what's best for kids at the expense of, right? And I'll give you an example of what I mean by this. Um, this past week, I had some issues uh, with my website, loading it up, and it was really frustrating. Uh, I was really struggling. And I think about um, some of the conversations and how frustrated I was getting uh, you know, during that time. And a lot of times when I would call, I would um, get to people who were hired by a company, but didn't have the ability to make decisions to help me in the moment. That they were, even though they could do it, they were limited because they literally said, here's like tier one, this is what I can do as a tier one, this is what I can do as a tier two, here's what I can do as a tier three. And the thing is, is that you could only talk to tier ones in an organization, but they would have to talk to the tier twos, get permission. They'd have to talk to two tier threes. And it wasn't just frustrating for me, but I could feel it was frustrating for them. The people that were close and look, they're like, I know what to do. I know how to help you. I'm just not allowed to. I'm not allowed to do what's right. 
and as someone who travels uh, quite a bit, and well, I used to anyway, but you know, someone who travels quite a bit uh, in the past, this is something I ran into with airlines all the time that you could literally uh, be at the gate, talk to the person, you know, closest to literally the door to get on the plane and something would happen, but they couldn't um, help you because they'd have to like contact a manager and that you weren't allowed to talk to that person. And you could see their frustration that they want to do what's best, but they weren't put in uh, to that situation in, in, in that space. And I think when you think about that, um, one of the terms that you see has shifted and I don't hear anymore is the idea of the customer is always right. Cause we know that's not true, right? Like sometimes people have, um, crazy, crazy demands or whatever, and they're not always right. And so for whatever, for whatever reasons, that's true, but you all, you still see that people are customer driven, but truly to be that way, you have to put the people closest to making the decisions in a space where they can help the people that you're serving, that you're ultimately serving. And so I think about um, some of my experiences. Uh, I know uh, Starbucks, not always known as the best company. Some of my interactions have been really good that um, I remember one time specifically, I had uh, a meal there that was something was wrong with it. And I told them right away and they're like, oh yeah, no problem. We're not even gonna charge you. Uh, we're gonna give you this free thing instead. And then never talked to a manager, never had that experience. And, and you walked away feeling good because you know, the organizations that really wanna help the people they serve, put the people closest to them in a situation where they can make decisions really well. And I think about this a lot in education that when you have teachers in classrooms, and this is one of the reasons why I always say, hey, I'm not providing solutions, like I'm just sharing ideas. And ultimately the people closest to, to students create the solutions. And the reason I say this is because I don't know your context. I don't know the situation. I don't know your students. You do. And so why I try to just provide ideas is to put people in the best situation to actually make and create the solution that's best for the kids, the ones that are closest to them. And I feel going back to that notion of being valued and feeling valued, a lot of educators really sometimes don't feel that they have the autonomy um, to, to do what's best for kids. And I understand that we work in this organization and sometimes, you know, things happen and, uh, that, you know, maybe teachers don't understand that are administrator, there's issues. I was an administrator for several years and sometimes you can't share certain things because of privacy and things like that. And I understand that, but the more we can put people closest, um, to, to, to our students, to in the situation where they can make the decisions that are, are best serving kids, the better off we are. And I think part of it too, is when we build missions and visions and things like that, do we do that in a dark room with a few people or do we bring a community in and do we bring them in together? Because if we're truly learner driven, then we actually create stuff as a community together. And we, 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 cause if you're part of creating the solution, you're more likely to actually implement it. But if it's something that's done for you and you just have no say, no thought in it, then, then that's where we tend to lose people. And that's why we talk about the notion of learner driven, not student driven, you know, obviously students are in that space, but how do you give the people closest to those, um, the opportunity to, um, create the best solutions. And one of my favorite quotes, and I'm not going to say it, uh, perfectly right is from Harriet Rubin. And she says, freedom is a bigger game than power. Power is about what you can control. Freedom is about what you can unleash. And at the end of the day, when we look to unleash the talent of those we serve, it's always the best way to not only help those 
to help our educators, but help the kids. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what we do. But we got to ensure that we're a truly learner-driven organization. So just some thoughts. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful uh, week. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And thanks for all you do. And I really want you to think about that term. What does learner-driven actually mean? And why is it so important to the work we do in education? So thanks so much for all you do. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.